Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Professor Snipe and today we're going to be taking a look at some first-hand PTE footage of Oman Rush. The footage you're currently seeing is an alpha version of the map. Maybe in a couple of months it'll be different for the final release. Right now the development team needs our feedback for this map. If you want to try it out, go to pte.battlefield.playforfree.com, sign up with an account and get playing. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Oman Rush and what it offers and its difference compared to Oman Assault. I want to thank I'm Only Vector for helping me record this, and also all the people on the server that decided to stop killing to allow us to record our footage. Vector will have an aerial view of the map on his channel, so if you want to take a look at that, click on the annotation on the screen. Now when it comes to initial visuals, the game map looks the same. It has the same bright sky and sun reflecting on it. It's not at night, it's not an evening, not at dusk, it's not at dawn, it's the same thing. Now Oman Rush is an L-shaped map. It doesn't play in a straight line, sort of like Karkand Rush. From the carrier's point of view, it starts out extreme west, then heads down to the middle where the A flag is, and then finishes up by pushing north towards the Russian base, ahead of where the C flag is, and where the gas station would be. So with that being said, there are three stages of MCOMs. The first stage is west from the carrier, and the MCOMs are far apart. The second stage is north from the carrier, and the MCOMs are a little bit closer to each other. And lastly, the third stage is even farther north, and the MCOMs are extremely close to each other. The attackers get a heavy load of aerial firepower. The air is practically dominated by the attackers. There are three attack helicopters and one little bird, alongside many transport choppers. I was a little bit disappointed by the lack of boats for the attackers. It seems like there are only about two. This could lead to a problem as too many people rush for helicopters, some pilots leaving teammates behind, and you know, pretty much everybody has to get on boats afterwards. But the problem is, even people on boats, they hop onto the boat and you just start going, right? then that means that if you have five helicopters that are already gone, you only have two boats, that's seven vehicles. What about the other people, you know? So the problem I see is that there's going to be a lot of people stuck on the carrier, and you know, some people have faster PCs, so it loads them up faster, so they get, you know, to get on the vehicle faster than other people. So I could see a little bit of an issue going on around there. Maybe add a couple of more boats just in case that people get left behind. I can't really justify this and prove this yet because, of course, I haven't played a full round with a lot of people. I've only played this little round uh, that I used to just test and record the map. Now, as for the defenders, their spawns have tanks and APCs, meaning that they dominate the ground game. But, of course, everybody loves a bunch of air versus ground combat, and I feel like this is what Oman Rush is going to focus on. As for the ground versus ground, I can see it working as the first and second MCOMs are really around small buildings that you can climb on, and it looks very CQC. The last set of MCOMs is more open and leaves more spaces for hectic fights, you know, with and without helicopters. I sort of do like the MCOM placement. I can't really tell if there are going to be issues regarding vehicle spam on the MCOM. There are no jets in the map, so it's highly possible that there won't be as much vehicle spam on the MCOM. And many MCOMs like the A stage, um, you know, the A on the second stage of Oman, is like in a small bunker. So, you know, you can't really get shells and rocket shells and stuff inside there. You can, but it's really hard to... And, you know, it seems like it's going to be more of an infantry-dominated area. But as for the last set of MCOMs, I'm most concerned about that one because it's completely open. Especially for one of them, it's completely open. You can easily take down a whole team of people trying to, you know, disarm it or arm it. So I don't know how it's going to work there. It feels like, you know, you can try so hard to kill a whole squad of people then just go in for the disarm and some helicopter pilot just, you know, spams his rocket and kills you. So, I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe it's going to be more engineer dominated at that, at that you know, stage. Um, right now, I can't really tell you guys uh, how it's going to play out, but I, I have a little bit concerned about that. Maybe build a little bunker, a small little village up there in the, in the mountains where you can have that last set of MCOMs. Maybe it'll be a bit more fair for infantry players. One problem about these rush maps is that you never know if it's going to be one-sided for attackers or defenders. Now, either way, it's almost never balanced, so it's always one-sided. Honestly, I can't tell you much about how the map plays, like I said, I haven't experienced it yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it with multiple people, have a full server, and see what people will play. Also, I haven't noticed any performance glitches or bugs, which is a good thing. My frame rate was constant and pretty high compared to, uh, you know, Karkand Rush, or Dalian Rush, or even Basra Rush. I think it's the lighting of the map that is pretty, you know, straightforward and allows that. I don't think they went for anything complicated, they just went straight up, you know, with the point. I think for both sides you're going to need a little bit of good cooperation with your team. First of all, you got to take down that air support to defend, and on the other way around, you got to take out those tanks and APCs that are very dangerous in the infantry, you know, lines of sight. you got to take those out if you really want to attack properly. The way I see it, it's a vehicle dependence map. You want to succeed against good players, you know, trace enemy vehicles, have the pilots take them out, you go in, infiltrate, kill a couple of infantry players and arm the MCOM. 
I don't really think many defenders will camp the MCOMs because it takes time to get there and also you have to worry about those helis. The map is open, rockets can hit anywhere, if you ever get traced, you know, watch out, there are three attack helicopters that can kill you. Speaking of helicopters, the Russian and US Apache are both in the same team and I just found that a bit messed up. Do I think that the map will become popular? At this point, not really. I thought Bajra was going to be popular because it's an infantry only map and guess what, nobody plays it. But on the other hand, Oman is an extremely popular assault map in this game. It's practically just Oman field. So maybe Rush will be even more popular or you know, as popular as its assault counterpart. I would definitely play Oman Rush if it was successful and demanded good co-op between air and infantry. I already see myself in team speak with a good pilot, telling him where all the vehicles are so he can take him out, while I'm sniping in the back, taking out people's heads, and arming the MCOM. I want to know what you guys think of this map. If you played it or not, go ahead, try it out, have fun. Feedback is what the devs are looking for. I will also be doing an updated Dragon Valley Rush video because I haven't made one yet. Well guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out I'm Only Vectors, aerial view of the map. Make sure to like this video and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.